Blows by Samson. Left in denial by Noel. What a play by Nurse. Nerland's Noel, the number six pick in the 2013 NBA draft, was talked about as someone who was going to anchor an NBA defense for years to come, but in his four seasons he's played so far, it hasn't turned out like some thought. He was starting in his rookie year in Philly, but now with the Mavs, he's coming off the bench and has had to deal with injuries along the way. Noel and the Dallas Mavericks aren't making the playoffs this year, so if you want to catch them or a regular season game before it ends, then I would recommend downloading the SeatGeek app. I've talked about it before, I'm sure you guys have heard of it. SeatGeek is the best app to buy tickets. I've used it in the past to see an NBA game, and the whole process was very simple. What SeatGeek does is it puts tickets together from all over the web into one spot, then they give those tickets a rating out of 100. So if it's green, then you know it's a good deal. If it's red, then you know it's bad. A really cool feature is that they let you see what your seats look like before you buy them. If you're looking to get tickets for an event in the future, the link to the SeatGeek app will be in the description and to get $20 off your first ticket purchase, you can use my code KANE at checkout. Going into his senior year of high school, Nerlens Noel was one of the most sought after high school recruits in years. ESPN and many other recruiting sites ranked him as the number one player in the nation because of his game changing shot blocking ability. He was getting recruited by Syracuse, Georgetown and other schools but he decided on Kentucky. He was playing pretty well at Kentucky in 24 games there. He averaged 11 points, 10 rebounds, and blocked 106 shots. But a month before the start of the NCAA tournament, he tore his ACL, which kept him out for the rest of the year. He still ended up winning SEC Freshman of the Year and SEC Defensive Player of the Year. At 6'11", 220 pounds, Nerlens had a skill set at the center position that can thrive in the modern era. Nerlens wasn't someone you'd call a post scorer, but his elite shot blocking and athleticism makes him a fit on basically every NBA team. He does not need the ball, Noel's offensive game is limited to alley-oops and one dribble dunks, but that's a good thing if you're on a team with high usage perimeter players. However, the injuries did scare some teams away as he fell to New Orleans at number 6 in the draft and they soon traded him to Philly. At the time, the Sixers made a big gamble trading away Drew Holiday and bringing in an injured rookie center, but if everything worked out, Nerlens was going to anchor a Sixers defense for years to come. He missed the entire 2013-2014 season, but played well in his first year. The defensive potential scouts talked about was being displayed. The Sixers only won 18 games in 2015, but they finished with the 12th ranked defense. Noel was anchoring that defense behind a bunch of D-leaguers and guys who aren't even in the league anymore. In 75 games, he averaged 10 points, 8 rebounds, and 2 blocks. But things got interesting in 2014 and 2015 when the Sixers selected Joel Embiid and then Jaleel Okafor. The Sixers now had three centers drafted in the lottery who were all players that were looking to become starters in the future. You do not need to see Jaleel, Nerlens, and Joel play together in the same game to see that their skill sets do not mesh well on the court. Okafor and Noel can't shoot at the three-point line, so you can't expect that to work long-term on offense. Okafor is not a good defender at all, so you have to keep him in the paint. If you try to put Embiid next to one of them, it's just going to be an awkward fit because Embiid can play on the block and step out at the three-point line. He can shoot it, but you want Embiid to get lots of post touches. Noel and Okafor would just get in the way. You know at one point, the Sixers had five players selected in the lottery that were taller than 6'10 on the team with Joel Embiid, Nerlens Noel, Dario Saric, Jaleel Okafor, and Ben Simmons. Yeah, that was never going to work out. So going into the 2016-2017 season, Noel's last year with Philly, he missed the first 23 games because of left knee surgery. Once he was back, Noel began to openly express his frustration with his role on the team as his minutes started to decrease. In December 2016, after only getting 8 minutes in a loss against the Lakers, Nerlens was heated and believed he was too good to only get 8 minutes in a game. He told the media after that game, I think I'm too good to be playing 8 minutes. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. We need to figure this out. F out of here. He was stuck behind Jaleel Okafor and Embiid in that game. Head coach Brett Brown said that because the Lakers went small and Noel was not fully healthy, it kept him out for most of the game. Once Joel Embiid proved that he is a game-changing player on both sides of the court, it was clear that Nerlens Noel's time in Philly was coming to an end. Luckily for him, Noel would not have to deal with getting shuffled to the back of the Sixers center rotation much longer. 
At the 2017 trade deadline, the Sixers traded away Noel for Andrew Bogut, Justin Anderson, and a protected first round pick. In the final 22 games with Dallas, Noel averaged 9 points and 7 rebounds. This past summer, the Mavericks offered him a 4-year, $70 million contract, which he declined and instead took a 1-year, $4 million deal, which makes him an unrestricted free agent this summer. Noel was betting on himself that he'd have a breakout season and prove to teams he's worth more than $17.5 million per year in the 2018 summer. But it's looking like he won't get anywhere close to that amount of money this summer. Noel had a double-double in Dallas' opening night, but had to have surgery for his left thumb later in the year, which forced him to sit out 40 games. The injuries haven't helped his growth as a player, but it does seem like he regressed overall. He has gotten outplayed by Dwight Powell and other members of the Mavs front court. Noel has gotten into a lot of foul trouble, and this is probably his worst defensive season of his career. At around 220 pounds, he's too small to bother people in the paint, and he gambles a lot on defense trying to make plays. Not to mention he doesn't have much of an offensive game besides dunks, so if he's not creating havoc on defense and bringing down rebounds, he has little effect on the game. There were high hopes for him as possibly the Mavs center of the future, but his time there so far has been disappointing. There were rumors that they were looking to buy him out two months ago, and he was in some trade rumors with the Lakers that did not go anywhere. It's obvious that Nerlens is probably not a part of the Mavs' future. His most memorable moment as a member of the Mavs is probably when someone caught him walking to the media dining room to get a hot dog in a game back in November 2017. Apparently, the Mavs have good hot dogs, and Nerlens told the media after the game that he needed energy for the second half. Yeah, spoiler alert for those that didn't watch that game, he did not play in the second half. Nerlens has been injured this year, but even before the injuries, he was still getting benched by Rick Carlisle. So that's it so far for Nerlens Noel's NBA career. What kind of player do you think he can become? In his rookie year with Philly, he was pretty good defensively, but a combination of being injured, being on a team with a bunch of centers, and his slight decline as a player have contributed to his shaky career. I think his ceiling as a player is a Clint Capella type of player, but he's going to have to get stronger defensively and maybe put on a bit of weight. He's had a few good games this past month, but I'm not sure what he's going to get on the market this summer as a lot of teams are capped out. If you enjoyed even one part of this video, definitely drop a thumbs up as it helps my channel grow. I appreciate it if you made it to this point in the video because most people don't make it to the end. Next video for the career series will be about Kenneth Fareed, so be on the lookout for that. Wherever you're watching this, I hope you have a great rest of your day or night, and I'll see you guys in my next video.